So, Paul, tell yes. me a bit, what makes this special? Because this is a very unusual control right. just to start with. So a lot of what we're doing is trying to give the robot uh, human-like capabilities in terms of its precision, uh, its movement, and also providing force feedback to the operator. So the way this interface works is that when I move my hand around, you'll notice the robot is actually mimicking my movement. As long as I'm holding this button down, I can click and drag that robot around. So I don't have to think too hard about the movement if I want. If I want to tap that S on the board, I could just move my hand down as if that gripper was attached to my hand. No, you're not thinking too hard, but the software is thinking pretty exactly. hard. Exactly. We make the computer do the hard work so the person doesn't have to. No. And then inside of those fingers that are on the gripper, there's sensors that measure force. So when that gripper goes and hits the ground, that force is transmitted back to my controller here. There's motors inside of this mechanism to push back on my hand. So when I go and the robot bumps into the ground, it feels like my hand bumped into the ground. So I'm getting force that? feedback, absolutely. So it's, if you hold it like a pistol, uh -huh. it's the middle, that button your middle finger is resting on. If you're holding that down. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. And so when I pr press the button so down, middle finger, oh yeah, I can feel it saying, you don't go there. Oh, and you're peeling the sticker up, that's all right. Uh -huh. We got more of them. There you go. Oh my goodness, how do I let go of that? So if you want to continue to go up, mm -hmm. let go of that middle finger button. I see. Click, Slide down click, and click and, and drag. It's very much like a mouse. It's exactly like a mouse, just in all and directions. And how do I let go of your poor sticker? So the trigger is what opens and closes the fingers. So if you push in, squeeze in to close, push out, because your finger's in a ring, push out on it and it will open. There you go. I see. Oh, I seem to have gotten your sticker for good. There you go. That's all right. And I pick, I pick this up and I can move this over and try to pick something up. I tell you what, I'm going to put one of those things back out for you to grab. Thanks. Okay, right under me, that's good. Okay, click and drag. Click and drag. Uh, Try to get one finger inside of that. Whoop. Very good. Straight Down. Up. Squeeze that trigger. Squeeze. Now keep squeezing the trigger. Clonk. Okay. And pick up. And what up. that button did is that locked the trigger in place. So if you, uh, you, you can let go of the trigger, it'll keep squeezing for you. Wow, so easy even a reporter can do it. Oh, wrong thing. I'll figure this out eventually. And up, and over, and uh, oh, I see. I need to go there. And go forward, little down. Get the get it looped over there very nicely. So that button that's lit up on the top. If you click that, now you have control of the gripper again. My goodness. Success. And I'm not even EOD trained. Exactly. Okay, if I can do it, a bomb squad guy can probably do it. Yeah, and they can do it quite well. Or like hazardous materials, biological, like if I have a vial of glass vial of anthrax, I probably don't want to use a huge amount of force on that. I yeah. probably want to pick it up as lightly as I can. Exactly and, right. And this will actually give me the feedback to do that. The force feedback will allow you to control exactly how hard you're squeezing something, how hard you're pushing on something. And so you can interact with things with a robot the same way that you would if you were there and using your own hand. Now compare that to current EOD robots. I sort of think of them, you know, driving up to somebody or to a bomb. To a bomb, they can put a, point a camera at it. They can shoot it with a shotgun. Maybe, you know, move it away. But they can't actually manipulate things. Right. A lot of the robots today really lack uh, a lot of precision. It's it's like trying to do detailed work with a backhoe. So what we're trying to do is provide more surgical level of precision with these robots. Uh, because at the end of the day, if the robot can't defeat the device, a person's going to have to walk up to it and put themselves in harm's way. So by giving the robot more capability, we're keeping more people safe, keeping people away from these hazardous devices, hazardous materials. And it comes down to saving people's lives, which is what this Absolutely. whole business is all about. Absolutely it is. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Bosher. Good to meet you. Thanks.